My name is Hojat. I am founder and CEO at Filter Stream. And I'm going to give a little bit fun talk on Flink and ClickHouse and how you can use them in combination to each other. In previous meetups, we actually had several talks that they had combination of Kafka and ClickHouse and few of them actually used Flink in between. And this is a very common deployment for these three systems if you want to use them together. Usually you have the data ingested in Kafka or your streaming storage layer. You can do transformations and aggregations and joins and those things in a streaming fashion using Apache Flink and write back the data into Kafka. And then you can ingest it from Kafka using ClickHouse ClickPipe or similar uh, connectors and serve it to the interactive queries that you have or at dashboards or a lot of interesting use cases that you saw in previous talks and the previous meetups. A couple of use cases that you can see in the uh, conjunction of Flink, Kafka, and ClickHouse. One of them actually, it's a company called GoldSky. They are using uh, these three combination for crypto data as a service. Uh, they actually have a blog in ClickHouse website that you can go and read. They're using Red Panda as their Kafka storage and they're using Flink for processing and preparing data to ingest into the ClickHouse and use ClickHouse for real-time analytics that they can serve this data to their customers. Uh, another interesting new use case, this was in the previous ClickHouse meetup a uh, few months ago, uh, Instacart, they are using the same combo that I mentioned, Kafka, Flink, and ClickHouse for their real-time fraud detection application. They build a pipeline, ingest data from Kafka, do the transformations in Flink again, and serve it to their uh, fraud detection application using ClickHouse. You have other use cases that, again, using these three combinations for building a feature store using ClickHouse. And also another example from Lyft that they actually switched to ClickHouse from uh, their previous Druid deployment and use combination of Kafka, Flink, and ClickHouse to provide to power many of services that they have, including the ones that they have here, like market health, spend tracking, forecasting, and market uh, singulating. You can build those three uh, components together and run things yourself. But if you're in cloud, you definitely should have a really good reason to operate these things yourself. For the Kafka or uh, streaming storage layer, you'd rather to just use existing uh, Kafka service systems like Confluent Cloud, MSK, Red Panda, or the previous speaker mentioned Warp Stream, uh, the new kid in the block. For ClickHouse, if you don't have any good reason to run it yourself and manage it yourself, there's no point, just use ClickHouse cloud it's serverless it's simple and you don't have to think about all of the complexity of operating these things so the question is what can you use for flink side you don't want to run flink yourself it's very complex it's very powerful but it comes with the complexity that prevents a lot of folks especially the folks that just mentioned flink and uh, just mentioned kafka and clickhouse i would bet one of the reasons that they didn't look at blink was the complexity of blink so what if you can have the power of Flink, but not the complexity of operating a Flink. So that's the thing that Delta Stream provides. Delta Stream is a serverless stream processing platform that you can build the streaming pipeline on top of st streaming storage systems like Kafka, Kinesis, Pulsar, and so forth. And you don't have to even think about Flink or Flink clusters or anything like that. You just connect the system, connect to your uh, streaming data sources, and start building pipelines, writing queries in SQL, and so forth a little bit high level architecture of uh, Delta Stream. So what Delta Stream is that not just provide stream processing capability, but goes beyond that. It provides a streaming data platform that you can use it for first and foremost, have a unified view on your streaming data. Usually you may have more than one Kafka cluster to store your streaming data, or you may have combination of these two, and you want to have a unified view over all of these in one place and be able to govern and manage and control access to all of these in one place instead of having each Kafka cluster managed by itself. So Delta Stream provides the abstraction layer on top of all of your, let's use Kafka as an example, all of your Kafka clusters. And for all the streams that you have in these different Kafka clusters, you can provide the unified view, cataloging, governance, role-based access control, and also secure sharing. So all of these included in Delta Stream, and you can easily do it the same way that you would do for with your batch data in databases that you are familiar with. Uh, second part is processing. As I mentioned, you can do stream processing without doing any infrastructure management yourself. You can build streaming analytics applications, usually the ones that you build with Flink, and you can also build materialized views. Streaming database systems provide these things. And this 
kind of combines the streaming stream processing and streaming storage uh, and the storage part of that materialized view. And of course, uh, all of these are powered by Apache Flink under the hood. So we run the Apache Flink under the hood, so you don't have to think about complexity of dealing with running Apache Flink. And finally, it's a serverless platform. You don't have to think about like provisioning a cluster. How big of a cluster do I need when you are starting to write any streaming application? You just connect to our system the same way that you don't think about clusters when you use S3. This is another service for stream processing. You don't think about cluster. You just connect to system and write as many queries as you want that scale, it scales up without even you thinking about scaling up. So in general, you can think about Delta Stream as something similar to what Delta, uh, Databricks or Snowflake built for the batch data. Think about especially Databricks. Data sits in S3, that's the storage part, and Databricks bring not only processing using Spark, but also governance, also sharing, also cataloging, all of those things. So we are doing the same thing for your streaming data. Instead of S3, our storage is Kafka clusters. And all of the services that I mentioned earlier, governance, processing, and role-based access control, all of things for streaming data that you have here. Now that we have a very quick overview of the what Delta Stream is and what it can do, what it can do, let's go and see a quick demo on how it works. Delta Stream is a uh, SaaS service. We have different types of deployment. We have pu uh, public SaaS, and we also have bring your own cloud that can run the data plane in customers VPC and guarantees that the data stays in their in a cluster. But for all of these cases, you don't even have to care about it. Once you connect to the system, you have three ways of interacting with our system. It's a REST API that you can use our web UI, you can use our CLI, and you can also directly interact with our REST API using your own applications. Having said that, let's go to our web UI. Usually this is a nicer place to demo uh, the product. So as I mentioned, the first step is that we connect to your streaming cluster. So we have a notion of stores here. I already have two Kafka clusters that I have connected to and you can browse each of them. One of them is Confluent Cloud, another one is MSK. In MSK, I can go here, I can look at the topics, and then you can easily add more and more Kafka clusters. So as I mentioned earlier, this sits on top of all of your Kafka clusters and gives you a unified view of all of your data. You can go here, I have, a, if I look for page views, I have a topic called page views, I have a, data generator that continuously generates data to this. If I print the content of this topic, I can easily see the data that is being published to the topic in real time. So it's connecting to the topic and there you go, you can see the data that comes to the topic. And you can see it in different formats. I can stop you. So this is a live data. I have, if I go back to my store, I have multiple topics here. I can explore them and see the content of that topic and so forth. So, so far, it's just the UI for Kafka, right? But now we want to have a relational model on top of this data and also start building queries and pipelines and so forth. For that, the first step is to go to catalog and create a database. I already created a database here. You can create as many databases as you want. Exactly the same concepts as any relational system similar to ClickHouse. So that's another advantage that you don't have to learn anything new. The same concepts are here. So you can go here, explore this. There's a schema inside the database, and this is the default public schema. You can add any schema that you want, and this schema is empty at the moment. So the first step, I can go to SQL Editor and start building some streams. These are DDL statements, similar to create table, but here I'm creating a stream. Very simple. So what I do is that I have a page views topic, the page view events that I have, these are the columns that I have, as you saw in the topic topics that we saw. And in the width class, I specify configuration of like where this topic sits. It's a topic in the MSK cluster, and the name of the topic is this, and the format is JSON. So I can do the same thing for another topic that I have called users. But the difference in this case is that for the users topic, I'm building a change log. The reason I'm building change log instead of stream is that stream is uh, this joint events. Every event is independent. Changelog is events that have primary key, and every event that comes with the primary key is observed for the previous primary key. So this is just a semantic. That's defining it as a changelog or a stream. It just tells Delta Stream what semantic it should use for writing queries on top of it. I could write a stream. That way it would 
is to reach out those updates. If someone changes the email address or the address, it's just going to be another, they're not going to relate to each other. But now that there's change log, I have to specify a key, uh, primary key, as you see here. And also, it's going to be uh, use, treating this as upstart. So I run this and I have another uh, stream available. If I go to catalog, I will be able to see the relations that I built. So I have a stream. I can go here, see the content of this and metadata of which Kafka cluster this is in and so forth. So now that I have these, I can easily start writing queries. I start with writing a enrichment query, which joins the page views with my user change log. And this join, since I defined user as a change log, it's going to be a temporal join, meaning that every time I have a page views coming, it's going to look up in the users and use the right version of that user, meaning that the latest version before the time is stamped. So this takes care of that semantic and makes sure that it's always having the right version of the user uh, joined with the page views. So as you see, in databases, we have C tasks, right? We have a CSAS here, create stream as select. What I do here, I'm saying that the result of this query, create a new stream and pipe the results of this new stream. So if I go to my, we have queries, I launch this query. It usually takes like 10, 15 seconds to launch this because it's launching its own Flink cluster under the hood. Again, you don't have to even know about Flink. And in the stream 360, as you see, I'm joining these two with this query and it's going to write into a new stream that I just created. So if I go to my Kafka cluster, I should see an enriched uh, page view topic in that Kafka cluster that's being written by this query. Uh, one more quick thing. Let's see the query is started. Yes, query is running. I can go here actually and publish the print the content of that enriched one. Enrich page view. So if I print this, this is a new topic that this, cre this query just created. And once I print this, the result is going to be page view with the user information that I just joined with that. So it takes some time to connect to the Kafka cluster and start pulling data from this. So as you see, user ID, page ID, user ID from the user side, and then the gender, page ID, and the interest combination of that uh, information that you have from the user side. You can have any type of SQL queries that you would write in Flink SQL here without having to deal with the complexity of the uh, running Flink clusters, dealing with the scaling up, scaling not fault tolerance, all of, all of these jobs that we have are running independently in their own Flink cluster in isolation. We do automatic checkpointing and save pointing. So if there's any failures and uh, problems, it recovers automatically without having you to have you to look into it. We have this stream 360 that you can see the flow of your data. It, as you add more and more queries, it's going to kind of like show the lineage of data, where data comes from and how it has been transformed. And, and finally, once you prepare these streaming data from that Kafka topic that you have, you can take it to ClickHouse and serve it to other applications that you have. Uh, as I said, we are a SaaS product. We are not an, kind of like something that you can download and run on your laptop. But we have quite a few of interesting videos that shows how we can implement different use cases and different uh, projects with Delta Stream with just few statements in CQL, and you're good to go. You don't even have to think about uh, running Flink or even knowing under the hood you're running Flink. Primary interface is CQL, but if you need more than CQL, we have capability of user-defined functions, user-defined aggregate functions that you can write it and bring it in and put more complex computation inside those UDFs and UDAFs. All right, that was the quick summary of like how you can use Delta Stream to run your Flink jobs and be part of the Kafka Flink ClickHouse architectures that we see very often these days.